What up, y'all? It's the homie Dame, and it's that time again. We're talking about anime hot takes. Ooh, spicy, steamy sriracha. As I have many times before, I asked all of you on Twitter to send me your hottest anime and manga takes, and also just some general life takes, too. Because, you know, there are more important things in life to talk about than just cartoon Japanese people punching each other. Not a lot, but a few. So yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, starting with this first one from Anthony. Shout out to you. Main characters in anime get outshine, outshined by their supporting cast more times than not. Uh, okay, obviously a very subjective opinion. I'm sure everyone will have a different answer if you ask who shines the most in any given series. But let's just play along and see how often this is the case by looking at the good old popularity polls. Attack on Titan, that's a somewhat popular show, I'd say. Maybe a few of you have heard of it. According to this popularity poll from last year, the most popular character is Levi, who, I guess, yeah, he's a supporting character, no? Where's Aaron at? Number 10, Jesus. Let's check out One Piece too. yeah? Don't people like that series? Okay, uh, I'm looking at the wiki, and they have this chart for the seventh popularity poll organized by region. Uh, so let's look at Asia and Japan, because that's all that matters, let's be real. Number one for both is Luffy, and I think Luffy is the main character, right? It's been a while since I've read One Piece, so maybe I'm remembering it wrong, and... I don't know, the main character's Big Mom or something. How about a series that's super relevant at the moment? Let's check out Free Run. I guess they've only done one popularity poll so far, so let's see. Number one is Himmel. That's actually kind of surprising, but not that surprising at the same time. If you remember my last Free Run video, you know that he's made like a huge pop culture impact over in the motherland. But yeah, Free Run is number two in her own series. Fern at five is crazy. The Mimic at three is funny as hell. Ah, oh, hell nah. Those, those silly Japanese and their jokes. But yeah, whatever. Those are just some random examples. It doesn't mean anything. Like I said, it's up to you, the consumer, to decide who has more of an impact in a series. And that's going to vary. So who knows? MAPPA as a studio are a big negative for the industry. And if other studios start taking in as much work as they do, we'll be getting entire seasons of rushed productions. Um... I, I agree with parts of this. Well, first off, this is going under the assumption that all MAPPA products have been rushed and low quality, which, I mean, again, that's up for the viewer to decide. I know there were problems with Jujutsu Kaisen and even some other shows, but I feel like in general, MAPPA's been doing a pretty solid job so far. I agree with this sentiment in general, though. Not even talking about anime, but just in any industry. If people see that they can cut corners and sacrifice quality for quantity and be successful and profitable, uh, that could be bad news because then everybody got to follow suit unless they want to fall behind money wise But is that really what we're seeing in the anime industry right now? Let's just do a quick comparison and then y'all tell me what you think in the comments Okay, so according to wikipedia in 2023 alone mappa put out four anime series uh, and then a movie, a Maboroshi. Out of these four anime, y'all tell me which ones were rushed or poor quality. I think Vinland Saga Season 2 was pretty much universally acclaimed, no? Campfire Cooking in Another World was good in my opinion. Hell's Paradise, uh, I personally liked, but I know some opinions are mixed. And then Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 was generally really well praised beside like the animation flubs i guess that i talked about earlier now let's look at some other big studios like a1 pictures everyone likes them right they also put out four anime in 2023 wit studio had three anime and a movie bones had three and madhouse had three and a movie so it looks like per year going by last year at least mappa is putting out content at around the same rate as the rest of the industry Though, if you look at the surrounding years, MAPPA is generally keeping up that rate of production year to year, while some studios will have years where they only drop like, you know, one or two projects. So keep that in mind. So if the question is, what will happen if the rest of the industry takes on as much work as MAPPA? Uh, they already do take around the same amount of work. So maybe the better question to ask is what will happen if the rest of the industry takes on the same poor employee overworking practices that MAPPA have, which the answer to that is, they already kind of do. So I think the premise of this take is a little flawed, but again, I agree with the sentiment. Because we can already see that in something like the video game industry, where certain companies will put out yearly or almost yearly releases for games and they're low effort and rushed, but they make a lot of money, so it sends the message to other developers to do the same thing. So really, if this is going to be a problem at all, it's going to be a big industry-wide thing and not just because of MAPPA. Now we got a similar take from Squad Kunai. Shout out to them, longtime supporter. MAPPA's 
constant anime production might be a pro to the industry as much as it's a con. Since most of its adaptations are popular series, the influx can attract a bigger audience. Uh, again, I kind of agree with this and I kind of don't. It's true that MAPPA adapts a lot of popular series, but those are series that are already popular with manga fans, and we all know that manga fans and anime fans have an overlap. Like, they're all otaku, right? So of course these series will be popular in the already existing weeb sphere, because everyone watches like the big AAA anime of the season, right? If you're even like a casual anime fan, that's just a thing you do. But will it attract a bigger audience in terms of like the general population? I think that's what Squad Kunai is getting at here, and I'd say that's a little less likely. It takes a lot for an anime series to break into the mainstream, because in most of the world, yes, even Japan, anime is still seen as weird as fuck. You kind of need to strike lightning in a bottle for an anime to become popular with Bob, your co-worker who only turns on the TV to watch the Packers on Sundays. Demon Slayer did this in 2019 because a bunch of celebrities were tweeting about the Hinokami Kagura episode, and of course, classic shows like Dragon Ball or Naruto are relatively known to a general audience. Like, people can recognize Goku. Now, MAPPA shows like Chainsaw Man have definitely kind of broken into this mainstream, so I for sure agree with that example. Jujutsu Kaisen is kind of there too, but I think Bob, your co-worker, is more likely to watch Chainsaw Man than Jujutsu Kaisen. So yeah, MAPPA definitely can draw in a mainstream general audience by adapting these big manga series, but I mean, it doesn't have to be MAPPA. Because a lot of the other mainstream hits are from manga that are popular, but aren't necessarily big blockbuster action battle shonen. Like Spy Family, for example. That's a shonen manga too, but it's obviously more on the slice of life side. Hugely popular with a general audience. I mean, like, they did a collab with Mission Impossible. Come on. Another example I'd say is Free Ren, which is easily the breakout hit of the past year. It's another shonen manga, but again, it's not like a triple A blockbuster title. And that series has seen a lot of general audience appeal. Again, you can check out my last free run video because I talk about how it's become basically a cultural phenomenon in Japan. And this is anecdotal, but a lot of my friends who don't watch anime watched free run and absolutely loved it. I find that free run is a really easy show to recommend to people who don't watch anime, so in that sense, it has mainstream appeal, at least in my opinion. So yeah, MAPPA adapting all these blockbuster series can be a pro in the industry, but again, it doesn't have to be MAPPA. Just any popular anime that gets popular for whatever reason can be beneficial to the industry as a whole. Like, bro, if we get another series on the level of like a Yu-Gi-Oh or Pokemon from some random studio, that's gonna bring in more people into the anime scene than any of the series I mentioned combined. Okay, so Squad also has a second part to his tweet that says, it's okay not to have a set career that some considered appropriate for your age range. I agree with that 100% because who decides what's appropriate for your age? If you're making money, you're making money. Who cares? We all got to do what we got to do to pay the bills, right? If you watch this channel, you know I've worked a million and one odd jobs over the years. You know, when I was in college, I paid for my last year by playing Texas Hold'em. Is that an appropriate career for a 21-year-old? Who knows? Is my career of being a music producer right now appropriate for a 46 year old? Should I be working in a cubicle somewhere instead? Maybe, but I make a hell of a lot more money doing what I'm doing now, so. Okay, this is from Ruby Sandwich. Dating relies too much on unspoken rules. Communication is treated as a game, especially in early stages of relationships, which can be fun sometimes, but also ends up hurting people a lot. Basically, implications and social norms are how many people try to get feelings across. Yeah, that's true in a sense. Especially when the unspoken rules can cause these culture clashes. That's a big thing in our, you know, globalized world these days. Like, for example, there are a lot of girls over in China, but not all who don't like dating American guys because they think Americans are cheap, right? And this is a thing in South Korea and Japan too. They'll be like, huh, they want to spit the bill at a restaurant? What? Like, huh, you want to go half and half on rent? Excuse me? So yeah, that can cause some problems if you don't know these unspoken things, but the trick is just don't date those people then. Because for every person who has some rule like, oh, if he doesn't text me the morning after we go out to dinner, he's not the one. There's someone else who don't give a fuck. So the trick to dating is just find someone who aligns with all the stuff you care about. Because that's how life in general works, not just dating. Our society is built on these unspoken rules and social norms. You just gotta be able to read the room and figure out who you're dealing with on a case-to-case -case basis. And it may be rough, yeah, but I guarantee there's someone because every girl I've dated, ain't none of them care if I told them we were splitting this red lob their dinner bill. So they're out there. You just gotta look. Okay, uh, Sword Art Online could be in top five anime if the characters were written competently. Look, no offense, uh, Tabula Rasa, but that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You could say that about 
anything. Oh, Rent a Girlfriend would be the GOAT if Reiji Miyajima was better at writing. The Promised Neverland Season 2 would have been an all-time great if they adapted the manga better. X-Arm would have been good if they just wrote the characters like cyberpunk edgerunners. Like, when you do a broad hypothetical like that, you could apply it to anything. Sure, maybe Sword Art Online could have been completely different if the characters were written different obviously but hey shoulda coulda woulda uh rice and ketchup is really good y'all need to hop on <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, this is some broke ass shit, but hey, we've all been there, so I feel you. Growing up, I was on food stamps and everything, so I for sure know about this. But low key, the upgraded version of ketchup and rice is unironically good. Like rice with diced tomatoes and like soy sauce or fish sauce and egg. Ooh, that's what y'all need to get on. And it's not that much more expensive if you're smart about it. Life falls off after fifth grade. Okay, we're gonna end with this one because I agree 100%. Well, maybe not fifth grade, but I'd say high school. Because look, I'm the textbook definition of peaked in high school. Back in high school, I wasn't like the coolest or most popular, but I was pretty well liked at school. I was on the varsity basketball team. I was runner up for homecoming king my freshman year. And you know, in high school, your boy was getting some play from the baddies. But yeah, all that is in the past. Look at me now. <laughs> nah, but for real, this is a running joke amongst my friends because I'm literally that annoying dude who's like, hey, y'all remember when I hit that game winner sophomore year or that time I got head from Jenny Song in the bathroom of a Burger King? And it's like, bro, that was 38 years ago. Nobody cares. <sighs> y'all enjoy your youth, man. There's a big difference between a 1 out of 10 and a 3 out of 10. Are, are we talking about anime 1 out of 10? Or like attractiveness 1 out of 10? Why does this one seem so ominous? It's like a threat almost. What the fuck? <laughs>